Hi everyone, I'm Jillian from Crossover City Church and welcome to Church Online. We are so excited and so blessed even to be able to bring church to you, to your home. And so with that, if you don't know Crossover City Church, I want to read and share our vision and our mission with you. Our vision is loving to know Christ and dying to make Him known. So isn't that exactly what we are doing? We are saying that we are not going to sit back, we are not going to hold on and be quiet in this time. We are going to glorify God together, we are going to worship Him together, even if it means that you are in your home and we are where we are. Our mission comes from Luke 4 verse 18 and 19 and it says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, for He has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that the captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. So join us every Sunday at 9 a.m. That's when our online services will take place. And you can also look out for devotional videos and clips and things throughout the season just to um, keep you inspired, keep you motivated, and keep you blessed through the season. And if you need anything, if you need a prayer request, or if you have a prayer request, if you have anything that you'd like to say or ask, please do not hesitate to contact us on all our social media platforms. And together, we are crossing over. It's easy to think that when we give, not much happens. That's because we tend to think of it as a single transaction. We give, they get. The end. But what if there is more to the story? What if God is doing more than we know with our gift? Good news. He is. When we give, we are doing more than we know. Because God does more than we could imagine in three key ways. God works through us. We become a pipeline through which His blessings flow. Instead of holding tightly to what He has given us, we must let it overflow into the needy world around us, allowing God's glory to shine. God works with us. We become partners in His mission to renew and restore all things to Himself. Through our prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness, we join in the gracious work He has already begun. We become co-creators, shaping His world for good. God works in us. We become participants in His work of grace within our own hearts. Our giving helps transform us, even as we bless others. And as we align our treasure with what He treasures, we reveal the work He is doing in our hearts to make us more like Jesus. What happens when we give? More than we could ever imagine. Give generously and discover what God can do because of you.
Yes, we put our hopes in you. If I were you, I'd take pre. Before you take a sip of those thoughts. Cause in small, you'll get addicted and you won't get enough. You're driving me out of my mind. I'm blasting you on Facebook tonight. Thoughts, your words, I'm hurt. 
Shut up! Don't drink the... Cross over City Church family, so good to be with you once again this morning. Thank you so much for tuning in and being part of the journey with online church. I know it's not been easy for many. We really, really miss the gathering. We really, really miss just coming together. You know, as the scriptures reveal in the book of Hebrews, do not forsake the gathering of the saints. But we are thankful for technology that we can actually come together online and we can share those experiences together. I really pray and hope that this series has really been a breakthrough series for you and has also touched your life in some other way. You know, because I realize that in this, God really wants us to be you know, focus. God wants us to be whole. God wants us to be people that understands the different dynamics of relationships because we are made for relationships. You know, as I've shared many a times that the cross shows us that we connect with God and we connect with people, which means that we cannot go on in this life without people. We've seen how this lockdown might have affected some people where they could not have been in touch with others in this lockdown and it's actually affecting whether some has gotten depressed, whether some has had different thoughts of anxiety because why fellowship and connectivity, staying connected is so important, which is absolutely important. As you guys can see, I'm, I'm wearing the Believer merch, which is by IPJ Christian Clothing. Go follow them on Facebook. I'm not getting paid for this, but what I'm just saying is, go do check it out. It's so cool and I believe it's so important that we should really represent what we believe outside there so much ways so we're dealing with offense we're dealing with offense in different ways over the last couple of weeks have really touched a couple of nerves hit a couple of spots that many people were like mm, you know what I might be struggling with that or you know what I might be struggling with that and that is why I believe that the series is so imperative why because God wants us to be whole you know, I believe wholeness needs to minister to wholeness. God is not a God that wants us to be in the place where we are struggling with something for years and years without us actually getting the breakthrough, without us actually understanding that we're supposed to grow. Why? We are supposed to mature in this life. The person you were last year in 2019 is not supposed to be the person you are in 2020. We are supposed to grow and the ultimate goal is becoming like Christ, which is most important. So this is what this is all about, you know, that God really wants us to deal with these things that many people might not see. Why? These are heart issues. These are not things that might put you in the spotlight and make you famous, but these are things that we need to deal with within the depth of our heart so that we can live out a life that really represents God and represents the fruit of the Spirit as we go along. So we dealt with last week that all of us believe that God really wants his best for us. You know, with the fact that your past does not determine who you are. But God wants us to understand that our destiny is so much greater than where we come from in our history. And because of that, we cannot be struggling with the same things of yesterday and go into tomorrow with that. God really wants us to work on our mindset so that we can really go into life and go into, a, into society with a greater perspective of the future. You know, and he's saying, you know what, I've designed you uniquely. I've placed you so strategically where you are. I made you and I knew you before you were in your mother's womb. And that's why what I've predestined for you is so much greater that you cannot allow the past or the things of your past to really affect you going forward. And why? Because unfortunately we learn from these things. But guess what? God's saying, do not allow those hindrances to affect us. But so we've learned that offense is inevitable. We cannot sometimes stop offense from happening. And guess what? The enemy has realized that this has been one of his major plans. This has been one of his major plans that he actually comes in and he baits believers and he traps us and he ensnares us as the Bible reveals in the book of Matthew 24 where it says in the last days offenses will come. So Jesus even spoke about this by actually telling the disciples, Amen, these things will come. In the last days many will be offended. Last week we touched on the fact that when, we, when it comes to forgiveness, we've got to understand that when we forgive, it does not mean that whenever something might happen, you might not feel a certain way again. Why? Because the Bible comes and reveals to us in the book of Matthew, in the book of 
Matthew 17, going further, when you see in verse 6, we realize that Jesus starts talking about faith because the disciples came and asked him, Father God, increase our faith. Why? It's the only time they ever asked him to increase their faith. It was never done with when it came to healing the sick, laying of hands on those, delivering those out from, de from demonic manifestations. It was never even done when Peter had to walk on water. But guess when they asked to, for Jesus Christ to increase their faith? when they had to deal with forgiveness and offense. Why? Later on, we find in that passage that Jesus comes and he speaks about the mulberry tree, you know, that he says you have to have faith, um, this, um, faith as small as a mustard seed. And it's so important because one thing we realize here, what he's trying to make us understand is the fact that forgiveness is an act of faith. And when we speak faith, faith is this thing that goes forth and allows things to be accomplished. And what he's bringing us into perspective here is the fact that when, when you say, I forgive someone, you are saying something in faith, even though it might happen again, that you will continuously declare it in faith faith that you might feel resentment in your heart i declare i forgive you in faith that you might feel hurt in your heart i declare that i forgive you why because i am speaking forgiveness in the atmosphere regardless how i feel why because faith and feelings do not work together i'm going to say it again faith and feelings do not work together that's why i do not act and serve god based on how i feel at that moment because many a times we never felt a certain way before we had to go and do something but guess what we have to act in faith regardless that's how I feel right now, Lord God. I'm going to stand up and I'm going to praise you. Father God, I might feel low right now, but you know what? I'm going to worship you. I'm going to thank you for what is to come. Father God, I might not see, see breakthrough right now. I might not feel that there's a, like there's a breakthrough coming. But you know what, Lord God? I have faith. Why? Because I believe it is not based on my feelings. Even Drake had the song in my feelings. Guess what? I'm in faith. Faith is what pleases God. Faith is the thing that helps us break through. Not my feelings. Because if it were for my feelings, I most probably might have not been serving God today. It might be the same for someone right there. If you believe this right now, just say amen. That we are a people that serves God by faith. We are a people that understands that our currency we operate by is faith. We are a people that understands that regardless what I might be feeling right now, I am not subjected and I am not led by my feelings. I am led by the Spirit of God. God, and this happens by faith in the name of Jesus. Come on, just say amen right there wherever you are right now. If you believe this is for someone, just share it right there. Let them understand that, man, I am operating by faith. Just say there, I operate by faith, not by feelings. Because why? The Bible even comes and says that those who are led by the Spirit of God are the true sons of God. That means being led by the Spirit is an act of faith. And that makes me a son because of faith. And faith is the access into the kingdom. Faith is what brings me in connection to God and this is the beauty of this gospel that we have right here I act by faith not by feelings so we realize this within the last couple of weeks when we dealt with this that we need to forgive we understand that, that this is our principle, that in this kingdom, we operate with a different system. We operate with a different type of governance. We operate in an upside down kingdom than what the world comes and tells us what to do. So the, outside there, 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 there's things like if someone hurts you, you need to go out there and get them back. You need to go out there and get revenge. But you know, in this kingdom, Jesus comes and he just turns up the table and he's like, hey, listen up, man. Love your enemies. <laughs> do good to those. Who hate you pray for those who curse you huh serve those love those who persecute you what and he, he lays us down on the table and he comes right there and he tells us all of these things for us to understand what the kingdom principle is i mentioned it a couple of weeks ago where i said if you are going to be a follower of the lord jesus christ we are going to have to make up our minds to live a life of unconditional forgiveness but guess why he said this because it is representing the heart of god this is a kingdom of love this is a kingdom where we do not hate this is a kingdom where we celebrate this is a kingdom where we do not go out there and push others down or try and work against other people. Here in this kingdom, we work together. Here in this kingdom, we look out for the best of one another. Here in this kingdom, we look at each other and see the grace of God. Here in this kingdom, we look at each other and we see the love of God. When I look at you right now, I see the love of God. I see the grace of God. I see the favor of God. Why? In this kingdom, we look out for the best in one another. And that is something you need to understand. When we look at people, let's look at them in the lens of grace. Let's look at them with the perspective of God. Just imagine this was God's glass and he sees right there. We 
might see failure. We might see someone right that got pregnant out of wedlock. We might see someone that, that might just have lost their job. We might see someone that is in depression. But when God sees him, he sees him love. He sees his favor. He sees his blood. He sees the blood of Jesus. He sees the protection. He sees the hedge of protection. He comes right there and he sees us in his perspective. Why? He understands that you are wonderfully and you are fearfully made by the hand of God. And we've got to believe this. We've got to believe this. So let us go out there. Let's start taking off this glasses and we see this the mere man on the outside. But let us look at them as a gift. Let us look at them as the way God perceives them. God might see even more. And this is the beautiful thing of God. God knows us before we, better than we know ourselves. God knows what we are going to do before we even do it. And guess what? He still chooses to love us. He still chooses to see the blood. He still chooses to see that there is greater ahead. He still chooses to see what, you know what? I am within them. Therefore, they, they have the advantage. Can we start believing that? Can we start believing that? So this week we're going to get into the part, that was just my introduction, <laughs> just to put it out there. But this week we're going to start with the fact that there are certain times in the Bible where we see certain things happen. I'm going to speak about the different things that allow us to get offended. In the Bible right here, we see that in the book of, 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 of you know, in the Bible, the, the, the scriptures come and show us a passage of scripture where John comes here, you know what it says, John comes here and he heard something in prison about the works of Christ and he sent two of this, his, his disciples to, to go and find out is he the one coming or are they looking for another one. Jesus comes right here and Jesus comes and answers them and tells him, go and tell John the things which we hear. The blind see and the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed and the deaf will hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have the gospel preached to them. And blessed is he who is not offended because of me. We dealt with this a couple of weeks ago where I mentioned that when you want to be blessed, that we should not be offended. Many a times our offense block the blessing, you know. And here Jesus comes and Jesus comes and he tells him this. But it's so interesting because back in the day, the people back then was waiting for somebody to come and deliver them from their political struggles. Somebody to come and deliver them from all this, the, 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 the struggles and the hurt and the pain and everything that they were going through in that time. This is quite interesting. They were expecting something else. You know what I'm saying? They were expecting a deliverer. They were expecting this high and mighty coming on the wars and just slaying all this political turmoil that they were going through. That was the expectation, but they did not get it. So what am I trying to say right here is most of the time that the thing that leads to offenses is your expectations. You know what I'm saying this morning? Is your expectations. They weren't expecting that. Why? It was not necessarily the bad people in many of our books that crucified Jesus or called for him to be crucified. It was the people who considered that was following the law. It was considered that they were the good people that actually put him on the cross. Good people. They didn't expect this. They wanted something else. And what we find most of the time in the foundation of um, aspect of offense lies the fact that another person or perhaps God himself took action, made, us, made a statement or done something in the days of Jesus or somebody in today's life comes and they do something contrary to your desires or your expectation. Expectations is one of the main reasons for offense. Expectations. Look at your neighbor right now. Just tell them. Expectations. Expectations is one of the main reasons for offense. What kind of expectations? We find unspoken expectations. What do I mean by that? Unspoken expectation comes to the place where it speaks about certain things that you expected, but that was not necessarily communicated. You come into a relationship where you expected the other person just to do something, but you never communicated it to them. So you just thought that they should know. I want to be loved this way. They should know my coffee should be this warm. They should know you don't do this to me. They should know you do not raise your voice when you speak to me. They should know you should look at me in that perspective. They should know at 6.30 I watch my soapies. Unspoken expectation. And it's one of the roots that actually brings so much hurt to many relationships and cause many to be offended. Unspoken expectations. What am I trying to say? That we've got to get to the place where we can start speaking more. One of the main reasons why there's so much offense within so much relationships is because people do not go and communicate. And I'm not speaking just about a married couple. I'm speaking about your relationship with your boss, your relationship with your colleagues, your relationship with scholars, your relationship with friends, your relationship with families. We do not speak about the things that necessarily we want. We do not speak about the things that 
we actually expect from this relationship. Remember that there is normally a certain expectation based on the role that relationship plays within your life. We expect certain things, but the problem is we don't communicate it. We don't tell them, I would like it this way. Could you do it that way? These are my expectations. I believe that for singles right now, before you go into any relationship, lay down your expectations. Tell them what you are expecting. Another one in this is the fact that we find out that we have unmet expectations. Some of us might come to the place where we might have communicated this expectation, but then this expectation was not met. Yeah. We spoke about this. I told you take out the dirt and put it right there. You did not do it, so you did not meet my expectation. I thought you were going to love me in this way, and I spoke to you about it, but you did not meet that requirement. All the singles right there, before we want that husband, we go and we take what we want in a husband. And many a times when we marry this person, most of the people you married, you realize they did not meet the expectation. That's another one. The third one we find here is the unrealistic expectation. <laughs> Sometimes our expectations are just out of this world. And we need to get to the place where we understand what is real and what cannot happen. Unfortunately, some of us had this dream life that we always imagined and we wanted to go out and achieve and we realized that it did not necessarily happen that way because it was an unrealistic expectation. But the sad thing many a times of us is we have this unrealistic expectation many a times of people. We expect the world of them. And that's why sometimes I'm not going to, I'm going to say hope for the best, but I'm not going to say expect the worst. I'm going to say, let's not put people on pedestals. Because they are mere human beings. They are mere people. And sometimes we have this unrealistic expectation that they are supposed to do things this way. And they do not do it that way. Because you were raised in a household where it might have been shown to you. But it's not the way the world works out there. And it's certain things like that that we need to understand when it comes to offense. You understand why? The man on the street will really offend you. Because we don't expect anything from him. But that person in your life. Whether it's your father. Whether it's your mother. Whether it's your cousin. Whether it's your uncle. Whether it's your sister whether it's your colleague that person that is close to your life might offend you why because you've expected some things of them and sometimes we develop these unrealistic expectations what will happen if people do a contrary to it how do we then deal with it how do we handle ourselves and i think it's one of the most important things that we shouldn't put people on pedestals we should understand that people are people we should understand that people are human beings. We should understand that people are growing to become like Jesus. They are not him yet. We should understand that Christ within us, the hope of glory, but we are on a journey to become like him. We should understand all of these factors that we are dealing with people and just as much as God had to have grace with you as you are maturing, we need to have grace with other people. And how do we do that? By understanding that when we love people, when we respect people, we are sowing seeds. One of the toughest things for me, I'm a guy, I, 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 I respect people. I, I believe I respect people. I owe people in a high regard. And when I speak to you, I speak to you in a certain way. You understand where I want to bring it across and I respect you for who you are and I love you. And many a times, so, some of the things that really get me in the place of where I experience that offense is when I don't get it back. You know, I don't know if you can relate with me. Sometimes when what we do, we expect back. Because I love you in that way, I expect the love back. Expectations. Because I do this in that way, I expect that back expectations and many a times it's not necessarily the, 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 the outcome and sometimes I get offended when I'm like man I didn't exp I, 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 hey I did not do that to you why are you doing it to me I don't know who can relate with me right here this morning but God showed me that I'm planting seeds planting seeds of love sometimes people might have not received such a high quality of love or respect and guess what I'm the model that Christ has put on this earth to display that love that he gives me Sometimes people might have not received the kind of kind words that I give them. But guess what? God has come and he said, I put you as an ambassador on this earth to go and display that. Sometimes I have people might have not experienced forgiveness or had somebody asked him for forgiveness. And guess what? Christ comes in my life and he says, you know what? I'm going to put you as an ambassador because of that. Sometimes people might have experienced leadership that has been so detrimental to their walk from where they come from. And here you come with something different and they are not used to. Guess what God is saying? You are that ambassador. Sometimes your workplace might be so toxic, but God is saying, you go out there and you display the fruits of the Holy Spirit right there. Why you are an ambassador of the kingdom of God? 
And that's the beautiful thing right here. Many a times we don't realize it, but we are planting seeds all over. The Holy Spirit is the after preacher and he will go out and water. But you continue planting, regardless what whoever might say, you continue going out and doing good. Because the Bible says, continue doing good because in due time, you will receive a harvest. And I'm telling you right there, I'm not necessarily doing it because I want to receive something from it, but I'm doing it because it's been proven and given to me freely by the, by the God of all gods, by the King of all kings, by the Lord of all lords. It's been given to me by Jesus Christ himself freely. So I freely go and give. I can't hold this love in because I've got to share it. It's so overwhelming. <laughs> this love is just too great. And that is what God is telling us this morning. This is what God is telling us. Go out there. Be my ambassador. Display this love. Display that forgiveness. Display that kindness. Display that goodness. You are planting seeds all over. You are being the hands and feet of Jesus all over. You are showing them what a Christian is really all about. You are showing them what a Christ follower is really all about. And he's saying, regardless what some people might be expecting, you show them my love. He says, sometimes we've got to get into the place where we can be the example others need to see. And that is where God is putting us into the place right now. He is saying, my son, my daughter, go out there. Do not compromise. Be who I've called you to. Be. You can be the difference in this world. You can be the impact this world needs to see. You can be the one that can go out there and make the change in people's lives. Do not compromise. Just because the world might be doing some things one way, do not go that way. Just because the world says we do, we go out and we take revenge, you don't go and do it. Just because the world says we'll cuss at him every single time they do something wrong, you show something else. He is saying go out there and you can be the change. You can be the love. You can be that light on a, the top of a hill. You can be that light in the dark place you can be that change you want to see come on somebody come on somebody i know god is speaking to you right now start this watch party share this whatsoever but i know that god has chosen you to be something great and i believe we run in two lanes in this world the first lane is the fact that we are called to be like jesus the second lane is the fact that we are called to be unlike any other Christian that has walked this earth. Because God has made you uniquely just who you are, with your personality. And he's saying, hey man, I will use your personality to my glory. Some things I might have to twitch up and change, but I will use you for my glory. Regardless of what you've done. And what God is saying this morning is just avail yourself. Avail yourself. Send those people that messages. Tell them how much you love them. Tell them you celebrate them. Let us stop hating. Let us start celebrating. Come on, somebody. Let us get to the place where we can really uplift people out there and stop pushing people down so that we can climb higher on top of them. God brings it to the place. He says, amen. If you want, all of us have to win. Why we are blessed to be a blessing. When I step in the room, other people will start getting up because they'll understand, man, the blessing is about to arrive. The blessing has just gotten you. I come in the room and be lighted up. Man, why? Because God has called us for that. God has called us for that to bring light to any dark situation god has called you to the place where you can bring a change to any situation why by the leading of his spirit the bible said it is not by might nor by power but by the spirit of the lord thus says the lord and that's why we bring it in let us stop sometimes having these high expectations let us stop sometimes being upset when our expectations have not been met we can communicate about it remember a couple of weeks ago i spoke about the fact that when you are disappointed let them know you've hurt me let them know Talk about it because when you do not, this thing starts growing up in the heart and it starts coming to the place where you can't deal with it. We see it in the scriptures and I come to the end right now with Absalom. Absalom finds it himself in the place where his sister was hurt and he goes to his far, he goes to the place in his mind, you know, when he's like, I'm really, really hurt. And he figures out that his father knows about this, but his father does nothing about it. Eventually he goes up to the place where he starts putting this in his heart. And you know what happens when you're offended? We want crowd. We want to find out if anybody else feels that, feels that way. That is one of the ways that the enemy uses us. He allows us to be his DJ and play that sound and play that music. Because we are looking for recruitment. Hey Amen. Did you also feel that way? Did you also feel that the way he said that? Or that movie made right there. Or what your pastor said at that point was not right. Do you also feel this way that he's doing this in that way? Huh? And we start going for recruitment and we start talking to people instead of talking to God about our problems. We start talking to people instead of talking to God about the issue that, he's facing, that we are facing within our heart. So what he does right there, he starts recruiting people. And through this, a rebellion starts where in the place where because of this rebellion started off small by him not actually communicating how he felt eventually ended up in rebellion causing a lot of people to come together absalom lost the fact that he lost his calling at that time he did not do what god intended of him he lost his position on the throne that he could have had and all of these things came into place because of him 
carrying an offense in his heart from the start. God is saying, set yourself free. Offense eventually comes into hate. The Bible says that if you hate in your heart, you've murdered your brother. That's how serious it is. But God is saying, I want to set you free. God says that the offense is the event, but living offended is a choice. Me, I've been offended, man. If you come into church, oh, the enemy just lays a whole lot of opportunities to be offended and for the offense to come. But me, I choose to live in freedom. I might have experienced the offense, but I will live free. I will not live offended. That's what I'm praying for you this morning. I pray that God touch you. I pray that God makes you understand why you are called and whose you are called for and for the purpose you are called and makes you understand that the enemy is going to try and present the stuff before you. But we cut it out in the name of Jesus. We cut out every ounce of bitterness that you are carrying right now. I cut out every single ounce of resentment you are carrying right now. I pray right now that God comes in and the Holy Spirit touches your heart and He heals you. That that heart of stone be turned into heart of flesh. I pray right now that every ounce of annoyance or irritation or whatever offense you may be carrying be loosed right now. I pray that you are free in Jesus' name. And may you live this life of freedom in liberation. In freedom. In the mighty and the matchless name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Family, be blessed. Go out there, live your life in such a way that you can make others also experience the freedom you are. You are a representation of what you carry. You are a representation of what you carry. I don't know about you, but me, I'll continually cross over. God bless.